There's my little, my little chick head. My Easter chick head. Oh, oh. it's really growing like Amy, a leaf. Amy, you're quite the little peep. Yeah. It's growing like a leaf. It's getting, mm-hmm. It looks darker. Yeah, I know. It does. And my widow's peak. <laughs> Eddie Munster. <laughs> you got the Sinead O'Connor look. I know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can well. surely lead the benediction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Bless us, O Lord, and, and these thy gifts, gifts which we are about to receive. From God, God, I bow to you through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, glorious day, and for all of these people sitting at this table that I love with all my heart. Look everywhere. Look oh. everywhere. <laughs> How many is that? Four? How many are there, Karen? Twenty-two. Six? Got six. Okay, Katie. So there's more to be found. Oh, yeah, oh I see one. Uncle Mark did some hiding. Did you walk down the steps, Katie? Wow, I found a really cool one. I woke up today thinking I'd have both of my drains removed, and uh, one of them's going to get removed. Um, so. I will get the oldest one to be taken out and because it's down to like single digits. Teaspoon. Yeah. Teaspoon a day. <laughs> and they don't want it to go dry. Right. One drain down. <laughs> I've told you about my Jackson Pratt drains and how annoying they can be. At one point I had five of these. Now I'm down to the last one. There was a little turtle. He lived in a box. He swam in the puddles. He climbed on the rocks. He snapped at a skeeto. He snapped at a flea. He snapped at a minnow. He snapped at me. He snapped at the minnow. He snapped at me. He snapped at you know, and he didn't catch me. <laughs> Very good. I want to get the skin off first, and then we'll do the juice. I want to do this part. That's the part you get to do. Yep, that's a good part. What is the juice? You're going to get the juice out of this lime. We're going to squeeze that. Put it right in the bowl. Uh, squeeze. Yeah, you got it. You know how to do it. Good job. Good job, Emma. Very good. You're very strong. I could do it. I could do it. Got it? I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> good. Good. Okay, now can we see it? See what? See the video. <laughs> <laughs> You're... Last one. Monday was a great day. I had my last physical therapy session, my last drain removed, and I got some stitches out. There's every other stitch is out of here. And I got filled up on each side. I'm texting with um, Emma's grandma, and she's also a breast cancer survivor. And we're talking about Emma and our visit that we had. And she was telling me how much, uh, I said how smart she was, and it was nice to spend some time with her. And she said she was asking Grandma the other day about her boobs and why she can't pick her up and will she ever be able to pick her up again. And um, it just started to make me cry to think about that because I tried to pick up Emma and I forgot that I'm not supposed to be doing that, so I quickly put her down. And then she remembered that Grandma can't do that either. So she um, looked at Grandma when she asked Grandma about not picking her up anymore. And she looked at her and she put her hands on her chest. (laughs) And she said, I just hope that nothing ever happens to my boobs. On Thursday, we stopped by our friend Ellen's antique store in downtown Kenosha, and she was showing us a lot of her great finds, including this Edison phonograph.
Did you like it? Yeah, was it was pretty it? cool. Huh? Yeah. You did such a great job. Yeah. You did it. Yesterday night. Were you? I'm free to. I'm free to drive. <laughs> just for this time being. I just figured that out a couple days ago. That I'm free to drive. Just those three hours that I get disconnected. I don't have anything connected to me. I don't have any drains anymore. Keep your eyes on the road, honey. So I can drive. So we're here at the plastic surgeon's office. I think I'm going to have maybe more um, stitches removed. And... Um, Maybe I probably I for sure another fill. This is a free book I got, and I'm just I, I can't even believe how great this is. I've got it all like highlighted <laughs> throughout. There's so many great passages that that are just I don't know. It's just like another book that I found at the right time. So I love it. I think the temperature is supposed to be like 56 degrees or something. Right. I think the wind chill makes it feel more like 34. Yeah, I would say. Uh, <laughs> kind of windy out here on North Beach. I keep uh, looking behind us thinking, oh, we better get out of the way. But I don't, there's nobody out here. <laughs> the other day I went over to the Y. They're going to do their second uh, set of uh, Livestrong cancer survivors so I went they wanted all of us to return and maybe be like mentors and helping out these people so I went there the other day um, I got a phone call from a, a woman that a friend of mine who's also a breast cancer survivor her neighbor now is just been diagnosed and I think she went through her surgery today and uh, so I talked with her and we're exactly the same age and um, so we uh, will be connecting now, helping each other out. And uh, tonight I'm going to be meeting up with my friends from Circle of Hope, the support group that I go to. And we're going to have a girls' night out doing, uh, like, making a journal, making some sort of a book. We're going to meet up at the library and so it's kind of a fun night out for just to hang out. I got a call from my nurse. I still have my, my line in, of course. And uh, she comes to the house every week, and she called yesterday and said, you know, I'm going to come by on Sunday and take some more blood from you because your white blood cell count is down. So that was a little alarming, and any of the plans that I had for this weekend I've canceled because I just feel like I don't need to be around people. I've come this far. I, I want to, you know, go through this successfully. So, so she was supposed to come today to draw blood. <laughs> She couldn't drop blood. She uh, went to go pull back the return and nothing's coming out. And every week she's always like, oh, you've got such a good return and everything's going, flowing well. So she went ahead and had me lay down, had me put, put my arm across the table, uh, put my arm up in the air, do all sorts of things. And nothing, nothing, nothing worked. So I'm freaking out about that. I mean, I just was, you know, come on, I feel so disappointed. And then she's like, oh, don't worry about it, 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 it ha that happens. But a lot of people it happens to, so, I don't know, we're going up tomorrow. And I'm going to have uh, the rest of my um, saline put into my breasts to have the final fill, because I have my radiology appointment at the end of the week, so. They wanted me to be at full capacity, and then I'll be ready to uh, get mapped for my radiation. Um, well, I'm done. I got uh, just a, a fill 75 in my right side that's going to be radiated, so I'm full now. Everything's done. I don't see the plastic surgeon for two months, but right now we're headed over. Um, I see him after my, my radiation's done. And uh, we're headed now to go have my blood drawn. Got a nice little bracelet. <laughs> Red bandage. She did it. She got my veins. I had to pause my machine because I was in the middle of getting my medicine. And she's like, oh, what's that? So we had to wait a minute. But I paused it. She drew my blood. No problem. Three while you drive the tornado warning remains in effect until 5.30 p.m. for central Wednesday.
Telling her friend the whole story. <laughs> so she's retelling it. It's making me laugh. <laughs> I'm like a little kid. <laughs> when I hear that somebody farted, it's like. <laughs> squeal down the street and then all of a sudden I and the street is blocked up there so nobody can go down our street anymore because there's construction but I heard a squeal and then all of a sudden I heard like a quick whoop of a cop car and there's a big SUV and a cop car they pull off they've got flashlights on a guy or a girl or I don't even know where are you going up to the infectious disease doctor. Follow up from my hospital stay that she saw me and now she wants to check on uh, how the 42 days have gone. It's not quite 42 days, but um, I've been told by a few people that I might have the pick line taken out today. And then when we got in here, the two medical assistants just said, get your pick line pulled today. <laughs> Could be my last remaining dose going in, I'm not sure. It's gone. It's out. It was really painless, completely. She just like said, okay, take a deep breath and hold it. And then she goes, it's out, you can breathe. And I didn't even feel anything. So it's done. What are you still doing here? Well, I have to lay, they have to monitor me for at least a half hour to make sure everything's okay. So I've got a little oxygen or my pulse. I think the pulse is being checked. I can drive, actually, too. You could navigate and I could drive. We're here for radiation. Oh, there's a big old mushroom cloud. <laughs> we'll get more radiation than what we thought. <laughs> oh, look at this beautiful tree. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm going to get mapped, I guess, and looked at to see how my anatomy is set up. <laughs> And then where are you going to get irradiated? Irradiated this, like this whole area, like there's lymph nodes here and here, and the whole incision area is going to be radiated. So pretty much the whole breast and underneath there, you know, so. Oh, I had to have my arms up over my head for a good 30 minutes, and that was a little difficult. Luckily, you get into this little, like, uh, like a beanbag chair thing that kind of vacuums so you're, it holds you in a mold to hold your arms up over your head. So I was in that position and could not move for 30 minutes while the um, CAT scan, wasn't it? That's what she said, a CAT scan? Took pictures of my body. And then after that, then they went ahead and they had to tattoo me. So I got markings all over. I've got ink too, I gotta wash off. But there's a little tattoo right there. And that one, cute, oh, it killed. She just poked, but it's just bone right there. So she's like, a few of these might hurt a little. <laughs> just about jumped out of my skin on that one. <laughs> so, um, so she's got all these. Uh, I must have six different little dots tattooed and mapped out on my skin. And then, okay, we're gonna come in now and get you out of there. So she pulls me out. The bed goes down. I come out of the little halo. It's like a halo that you go into. And then um, I get down, and she's like, okay, you can put your arms out. <laughs> I was like. 
I cannot get my arms out so I had to slowly pull my arm and she had to help my arm out and then this other one and you're cradled my head had to be like laying in this thing like sideways like that and my arms up in the air and and then that thing molds to your body and um, <clears throat> they both had to help my arms down because it just they were killing me so once we got out of there I was like oh. <laughs> I mean, when you and I got out, I just felt so wiped out that it just exhausted. So I get done and I take off the gown and I just start laughing out loud. I don't know if they could hear me or not. But on this breast here, I've got like a tiny little red spot that is, it's kind of like a freckle. I don't know what those are called, but it's been there for a very long time. Before I had surgery, anything, I've noticed that little spot right there. And they have like, it's a, it's a pretty red bright spot and they have it circled. It's like a bullseye. And, it, and to me, the only thing I could think of this was like, when you go rent a car and you have it all looked at first and like, oh yeah, that was there before we did anything. I just started laughing thinking like, that's not something we did. That was there before. So it was just kind of cute. It made me laugh.